Welcome back guys. So this video is going to be really interesting because we just got to the pinnacle of our course. And the pinnacle of our course is starting to create the machine learning pipeline. Because remember, up until now, whenever we wanted to run a batch transform job, we just logged into our SageMaker account, uh, started a studio notebook and launched the job. And that's you know, that is far from production. You don't want to do that in production. In production, you want to use a machine learning pipeline that is durable and you can just create and then put it off on the shelf and it will run on its own uh, every day or every two days, twice a day, you know, whatever you specify. Obviously, you know, with uh, machine learning pipelines, you have to monitor them and make sure that they're working correctly and working as expected, but you don't have to uh, log into SageMaker Studio notebooks and start batch transform jobs or do any any of that thing. So that's why we're going to be using step functions. Now, if you don't know what step functions are, it's basically a visual workflow service that helps developers use AWS services to build distributed applications, automate processes, orchestrate microservices, and create data and machine learning pipelines. Now, uh, I could compare uh, step functions with Airflow or Kubeflow. You know, they're both orchestration tools, but they're different. Airflow is uh, is is a little different. Kubeflow is a little different. So each of each of these uh, orchestration tools has its own uh, caveats. Uh, but you know, just so you get the idea, it's basically a pipeline that you're going to be able to visually see and uh, create it for yourself. And in AWS, they're basically, in my opinion, two preferred way of creating machine learning pipelines. And one of them is through step functions and the other one is through SageMaker pipelines. However, I do believe that with step functions, uh, it's easier to integrate other AWS services in like Lambda functions and, you know, all other services. You can still do that with uh, SageMaker pipelines and SageMaker components, but I don't think it's as smooth. So I think this is the uh, best possible way, which is why I'm showing you guys this way. And, you know, some of you might prefer SageMaker pipelines. Uh, again, you know, it's whatever you uh, desire, but I do believe that step functions is more convenient and it's more easy to configure and you just basically have a better oversight of what's happening. So let's go to step functions. As you can see, it's a coordinate distributed applications, which is the uh, description. So click on it. And here I already have a state machine and I'm going to tell you guys what a state machine is. And this might not be the screen that you see. So don't be alarmed. So, this is probably the screen that you're seeing. So let's uh, click on get started. And here it's gonna give us a sample project. Now we don't want to use this sample project. So I'm gonna click over here at the top to where it says state machines. And yes, I want to leave this. And like I said, I already have one uh, here that I set up for this course, uh, but we're gonna create a new one. So let's create a state machine. And before we get into it, I do want to shed some light on what is going on and what a state machine is and what are tasks and those kind of things. So AWS Step Functions is a serverless orchestration service that lets you integrate with AWS Lambda Functions and other AWS services to build basically business critical applications. And through the graphical console, you can see your applications workflow as a series of event driven steps. And step functions is based on state machines and tasks. And a state machine is basically just a workflow. And a task is a state in a workflow that represents a single unit of work that an other AWS service performs. So basically each step in a workflow is a state. And there are three ways you can create uh, your step functions. One is you can design it through your workflow visually. One is you can write your code from uh, you know, scratch basically. And the other one is run a sample project. And by sample project, uh, that's what we're going to be doing because the team behind this, the AWS team did a really good job of creating several of these templates that you can use uh, afterwards and basically change it to your ideal and specific use cases. However, you don't have to, you know, create the whole thing from scratch. And now don't 
do what I'm doing uh, right now because this is just for demonstration. Because like I said, we're gonna create it through a sample project. But right now, I wanna show you guys how you can even do this visually. So like I said, just watch and don't do what I'm doing right now because this is not what we're gonna be doing. So I can come over here to design your workflow visually, go to next. And as you can see, this is how you can design your workflow visually. So I'm gonna say here's a start and here is a state and here's the end. So I can drag in a Lambda function over here. Obviously you have to specify the name, the inputs, outputs, error handling, so a lot of configuration. However, you can choose um, what, to, uh, what to do next. So as you can see, the next state, I can go to add a new state. And then I can search all of these AWS services. There's a bunch of AWS services. Uh, as you can see, we have SageMaker, we have Create App, uh, Create Context, we have a bunch of things. However, I just want to add another uh, Lambda function over here. And then I'm gonna click on that Lambda function and I can, uh, over here on the left, I can go to Flow and I can basically add a choice here. So actually first I have to click on this and the next state, I'm going to say add a new state and then I'm going to add a choice here. So basically that means depending on the output of the Lambda function, uh, we can have two states and then you can do immensely uh, complicated pipelines. I can drop in a success here. Um, I can drop in a fail here. So, and you can create these really intricate pipelines. Uh, and actually what we're gonna be doing is, like I said, we're gonna use a pre-built pipeline and configure it to our needs. However, we're also going to be able to visualize it. Um, but I just don't like to create something by just clicking and dragging because, uh, you know, obviously that's the future of programming, I guess, is you just, uh, drag and drop things, but I think it's it's better to understand what's going on behind the, the scene. So that's why I'm going to show you guys that. So I'm going to click on the back arrow and I'm going to go to run a sample project. And as you can see, here are a bunch of sample projects and I'm going to go to the job polar. And this is manage an asynchronous job using a serverless polling loop, AWS Lambda in AWS Batch. So the reason we're using this is because uh, our workflow is going to consist of starting an AWS batch transformation job. And we have to basically check to see if that job is finished. And if the job is finished, then we can save the results to S3. However, we somehow have to know if the job is finished. So that's going to be asynchronous, right? Because we can't go on to the next step, which is, you know, creating a Lambda function that saves the results to an S3 bucket unless we know uh, when the batch transformation job is complete. So that's why we have to use the asynchronous job using the serverless uh, polling loop. And these are the technologies uh, that are basically in this uh, sample project is AWS Lambda and AWS Batch. And you're going to see that it's uh, actually quite complicated process, uh, but it's we're going to talk it over and it's going to be really simple. Um, so click on job polar over here, come over here down, and this is going to be our project. And so as you can see, it's going to start it's gonna submit the job to the batch transform job. We're gonna wait, we can specify how much time uh, we should wait. And you know, we could wait like 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, we run a Lambda function. So this get job status is going to be a Lambda function. And that Lambda function is going to see if the batch transform job has finished or not. So it's going to uh, see, and if it did finish, it's going to get the final job stat status and we're going to save it to S3. If it did not finish, uh, you know, there's going to be a fail option. Uh, but if it's not complete, then it's going to go back over here and wait, uh, you know, 10 more minutes. After the 10 minutes has elapsed, it's going to get the status again. Is the job complete? And if it says no, then it's going to basically come back to the loop again. So this is uh, what we're doing. So every few minutes, we're going to check on our batch transform job to see if it's done. Now get the job status. Is it complete? And we have two options, whether it's complete and it succeeded or if it's complete and failed. 
and then we can go to the end process. Now, we're, we can uh, actually add addi additional things to this work workflow, and that's what we're gonna be doing. So our workflow is gonna look a little bit more uh, complex than this, but as you can see, here is the uh, file. It's a JSON file that we can manipulate. So here is the title, here is the lambda function that's going to run to submit the job and we're going to create the lambda function we're going to create the get uh, job status lambda function and we're going to create a lambda function that is going to do the final check and whether save the results to s3 or not and we're just going to have to put in the arn of those lambda functions so where those lambda functions are in the lambda function names and we're going to talk about, you know, what these means, these max attempts, the back off rate and those kind of things. Uh, but this is just an overview. So as you can see, it's it's a good machine learning pipeline. Obviously, it's a little bit complicated, but with the help of this visual UI, it's going to be really simple for us to uh, build it because we just have to uh, replace, you know, the Lambda function ARN. We can, you know change this to whatever we want to the name we can change how much it should wait and as you can see here for example we have we specify what the next thing is so the next is going to be get the uh final job status and this is a choice so is the job complete and the type is going to be a choice so that's why you have two arrows coming from the job complete uh, section. And we're going to talk about this more in detail, but I just want to, you know, introduce this topic to you. And so, yeah, this is what we're going to be doing. And now click on next. And as you can see, this step will create the necessary resources in your account using AWS uh, cloud formation. And note, this can take up to 10 minutes. Awesome. So let's uh deploy the resources and as you can see this can take up to 10 minutes and here is our stack id so i'm going to click into this okay and if you don't know what uh cloud formation is it's basically like uh as you can see the create is in uh progress it's basically like terraform and I really hope you know either terraform or cloud formation because otherwise it's going to be really hard for me to explain what's happening but one thing is you don't have to do anything with cloud formation because this is doing it automatically for you but basically it just creates these resources for you so it's going to create the lambda functions and obviously it's not a final lambda function right because we're going to have to uh, edit those lambda functions with our own custom code but it's going to create the lambda function so we don't have to manually uh create it and it's going to you know create the 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 other services that we're going to be using and we're going to talk this over in detail in the next video and see that you know what cloud formation has created for us and so it's going to be really exciting and i'm going to wait until this process is finished and once it is finished uh i will get back to you guys